Hello and welcome to Production Bytes. I'm your host, Veronova, and today I'm going to be reviewing Unveil by Zynaptic. Unveil is a signal focusing and de-reverberation plugin based on algorithms designed to work similarly to human perception. This allows the plugin to separate out what we would perceive as foreground and background sounds and process them separately. So before I show you what Unveil is actually capable of, I want to go over the controls quickly. And they're not traditionally named controls like you find on pretty much every other plugin in the world, because this is a completely new set of algorithms which do different things to anything which has been done before. And Synaptic did give me a warning that it might be quite hard to get a grasp on when they sent me the plugin for review because of this. However, the interface has turned out to be one of the most easy and intuitive interfaces that I've ever used. So here's what Unveil's got to offer. The first main control which you'll need to know about is the focus control. This control starts at zero and is effectively like a crossfader between the wet reverb signal and the dry focused signal. So if you have it all the way to the left, once the plugin's fully tuned, all you're going to hear is reverb, and if you have it all the way to the right, all you'll hear is the dry signal. Next, there's the localize control. Localize is similar to control of the resolution that the plugin sees. Turning it all the way to the left means less resolution, which means less control, but it also means less artifacts because frequency is being taken out less precisely. Turning it all the way to the right, however, means more resolution, more control, but it can mean more artifacts. So the aim of this really has to be to tune it to a sweet spot somewhere between all the way to the left and all the way to the right. And Zynaptic do recommend that somewhere in the centre is usually the best starting point. Next is Refract. And Refract does work very similarly to an attack control on a compressor. When the plugin's listening to the audio, this control determines how long it takes for the plugin to actually react to it and start removing sound. If you've got it quite low down, therefore, it's going to suppress a lot more reverb than quite high up. However, this can make the sounds a little muffled as treble starts to be affected by this. Adaption is another really interesting control. Basically, what this does is it tells the plugin how long the reverb tail is. So you need to tune the length to a value which is as long as your reverb tail. And you'll see when I change it, this chart up here changes. And this is so you can also use your eyes, as once you've got the waveform come up, you want to try and set this to around about the same shape as the tail on the waveform. And that is a really cool way to get the right tail, as it means you don't have to be looking at this and guessing and using your ears, or measuring in milliseconds how long the tail actually is. It means you can line it up with the audio instead, and that makes for a much easier approach. The final major control is the presence control, and this allows for some of the high frequency content which can be lost during the processing to return to the signal. Having it higher up will give you a more natural sound, but some of the reverb can start to return, and having it lower down will mean more reverb is removed, however you can start to lose the high end and get a slightly less natural sound. Therefore the best thing to do is usually to start right at the bottom, as some signals which are really easy for the plugin to process won't lose any of their top end at all, but if you do notice that the sound quality has been affected, you should start to bring this up a little once you've tuned the other controls. This is one of the great things about this plugin, because these five controls are the most important ones and you can just start at the beginning and work your way through, instead of having to make assumptions like you do with a compressor about your attack, release and ratio settings before you can start to tune them. The focus bias section is another really cool one, because what it allows you to do is if you have your main focus control at zero, and you turn all of these frequencies up, then your overall focus will be all the way up. And if you turn these all the way down, then your overall focus will be at the bottom. But the power this gives you is that if you want certain frequencies to be affected and others not, you can bias the focus towards those frequencies and leave other frequencies alone. So right now everything between 3.5 kHz and 9.5 kHz has its focus all the way up, but all the other frequencies in the range are left alone and the reverb won't be removed at all. Likewise, if I'd moved these controls all the way down, everything between 3.5k and 9.5k would only be the reverb signal. So that's really powerful, especially if you've got your focus all the way up, but you notice there's one frequency range which is being affected, which doesn't actually have any reverb in. So you could then turn that down. Finally, the display controls aren't too important. You've got your peak link, which I haven't been able to work out exactly what it does, but it does make a difference to the waveforms when they're displayed, so you might discover a preference. The normalized control just roughly normalizes the waveforms, so if you've got a really quiet one, it's not just appearing down here. It will actually fill up the whole waveform view. Finally, there's one last thing to mention on the controls, and this is the transient threshold. Now what I initially thought this was, was a parallel gate, 
which gated the transients in the signal and then recombines it with the original signal to give everything a bit more snap. However, when I looked into it, what I found was this isn't actually a parallel gate. What it does is it selectively bypasses the process on transients. So instead of taking a gate and then combining the gated signal with the ungated signal, what it's actually doing is it's excluding the transients from the processing so that they won't lose any of their byte in the first place. And I have found this really useful on drums, which I'll also be going over later in the testing. So now that you hopefully understand what the plugin is and how it works, I want to show you some examples of what it's capable of. And to keep this review short, what I'm going to do is pop an annotation on screen to an unlisted video which will contain my full testing. But right here what I'm going to show is the pre-processing and processed audio. So if you want to see me using the plugin in action and my full testing, then pause the video, head over to that video and watch that, and then come back here to finish the review. So first of all, here's the singing before. When I close my eyes. And after. When I close my eyes. Next, I've got some guitar before. And after processing. Then, I've got some acoustic drums before. and after. And finally, I have an old quote from a movie before. Start your computations for time warp. And after. Start your computations for time warp. What do I think of this plugin? Firstly, it is completely unique. There are no competitors in the market that I've known of, and this is technology which has been completely developed by the creators of this software. So it's not a set of algorithms which are available for others. And personally, playing with the plugin, I think they've absolutely nailed it. I didn't actually find myself ever wanting to reach for the focus bias because I thought the focus did such a good job. And being that I'm used to working in a recording environment, especially if you're doing on-site recording for video, you don't tend to get perfect recordings. And this has always been the case in the video industry because you have to hold the mic off camera away from the people who are speaking. And we've dealt fine with this for decades. And therefore, with this plugin, the fact that it doesn't always completely remove the reverb is not a problem, because it's so capable of taking the sounds which are really swamped in reverb and making them sound like they're right in front of you and really audible. And that's all you really need when you're coming to post-production. Secondly, I think this is one of the best designed interfaces I've ever seen, especially since they were taking an interface with a lot of controls which haven't existed before. I think they've done a great job of making it easy to use and intuitive, as well as the plugin remaining incredibly powerful. The downsides? It's not cheap. It's $399 in the US and €399 Euros in the EU. And although when you look at exchange rates this looks like it's a little unbalanced, I'm told that the Euros price does actually include VAT, which means that they do come out around about the same price. However also, when I've looked at the distributors, I've seen the price does actually fluctuate a bit beyond this, so you might find the prices a bit different when you go to buy the plugin anyway. The final downside is that with these great algorithms comes a lot of CPU usage. In fact, right now, I've only got one instance of this plugin open and I have no other plugins running and my CPU is already idling around 65-70%. And this does become a problem when I switch on two of these because I immediately go into buffer underrun. And because of this, Synaptic do actually recommend that you work with a buffer of over 1024 samples. However, to maintain consistency between this review and all my other software reviews, I've been working in this tutorial within my usual buffer settings, so when you're working with this plugin, it's definitely a good idea to render your audio once you're happy with it. But of course, the important thing for me with a plugin is whether I'll actually use it, and I think this is at the other end of that scale, in fact. After a while of using this, I don't think I could live without this plugin. So despite the pricing and high CPU usage, it's definitely one I would recommend. Unveil is now at version 1.5 and is available for Mac and PC in AU, VST, RTAS and AAX formats for both platforms. But that is it for this episode of Production Bytes. I hope this review has been helpful to you and from next week we'll be continuing our series on Keronica. I'll see you next time.